Hi guys, my name is Brielle and I'm a professional dog trainer and canine behaviorist and I do want to give a quick trigger warning for this video. I will be talking about animal euthanasia, specifically dog euthanasia, and quality of life of an animal. In this So I do get a lot of questions about, you know, not necessarily about like euthanasia for my dog, obviously, because he's, he hasn't even turned three yet, but I do get a lot of questions about when my service dog Arlo is going to retire. And I have gone through a lot of dog retirements at the facility that I work at. The way that most dog owners or service dog handlers or working dog handlers make that decision is based on uh, medical retirement so if the dog gets diagnosed with something and they have to medically retire similar to toby my friend michaela from positivity and me um just had to retire her service dog uh he was still kind of in training but she had to retire him medically because he was diagnosed with an enlarged heart and I believe some sort of arthritis condition. But she was diagnosed, he was diagnosed with a couple conditions which made it best for him to medically retire. He can still live like a really long and happy life as a family pet, which is what he's doing. But um, that is one of the ways that retirement can happen is if an animal is no longer healthy enough to work. And then there is the second option which is retirement in terms of they have reached an age where they are not going to be happy working anymore. Or if they reach an age where they, you know, decide they don't want to anymore. They, they slow down, they show you they no longer want to work. That's kind of my uh, values of it. I have had dogs retire as young as, you know, four or five because the dog obviously shows the owner they're slowing down, shows the owner they're no longer interested in work uh, by different ways like they shy away from their vest, they are happier when they're at home, they uh, you know start not taking treats in public, you know other things, uh, they might not be able to keep up with your heel, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a lot of different things for different dogs but in Arlo's case, I plan to work him as long as he wants to work or he's as long as he's healthy enough to work. So there's the answer to that question. But I also do get a lot of questions at work about euthanasia for animals. So a lot of owners will come in and their dog comes and boards with us or something and they say, you know, she's reaching, she or he is reaching the end of their life and we want to know when it's best to euthanize or maybe their animal has some kind of condition like you know we've had a lot of people who come in and their dog has cancer and they're wondering when the best time for them to to euthanize the animal is and people will ask their veterinarians and get a very i'm not saying that veterinarians don't give good responses because i'm sure they do uh but in some cases people will come to us and tell us well my veterinarian said that um, they can't make that decision for me. And they're right, you know, they can't. It's your animal, it's your decision. But we should always consider that the owner knows the animal best. And it is their choice, but it's probably really difficult to make that choice. So today I'm going to give you guys the two different philosophies that I use when I'm talking to a pet parent or a service dog handler or whoever about when it might be right to euthanize their animal. I understand this is a really sensitive topic. Uh, these are just my opinions. Um, I am a licensed dog trainer and a canine behaviorist. However, I can't give you factual information on this because there isn't any. Quality of life is subjective so 
I think a bunch of people are going to think about this differently and this is just the way I think about it. So if you have another way you think about it, go ahead and leave it in the comments, but don't bash me for my personal views. Um, if you have something you want to bring up, maybe another way that I can think about it so that I can help these people more, I would love to hear it. Um, but for now, this is what I think. So I'm going to talk about the Journey's quality of life scale, uh, but first I'm going to talk about the main way that I think about it. I try and think of the top five things that your dog loves. So the top five things that make your dog as happy as possible. So let's say, like for Arlo, the top five things, probably he really loves running. He loves running around. So running is probably number one. He also really likes treats and food and he likes to be able to, you know, eat um, and some of his favorite treats are crunchy treats, so he loves to be able to eat those as well. He also loves to work. He loves training. Not necessarily service work all the time, but he loves doing something where he can get the right answer. He can do something right. He loves to hear the click. Um, so that's definitely on that list as well. This is not necessarily in order. Um, he loves being able to sleep in bed and cuddle with me and spend time with me and just kind of hang out. He loves cuddling, that kind of stuff. And number five, he really likes to play with his toys. Um, he really enjoys chewing on his bones and throwing his, you know, tennis ball around and that kind of stuff. Art Lowe's is relatively simple. But let's just say that your dog really enjoyed something like swimming or they really, really enjoyed jumping. Like they, they do agility and that's something that they really enjoy doing. Those things, obviously, let's say that a disorder that they have affects their ability to do that. So let's say they have arthritis and the pain is so bad, they can't do agility, they can't swim, they can't go on walks, they can't run, that kind of stuff. Let's say they, they can't get up on the bed on their own, they can't walk up or down stairs. Um, if that is something that is affecting their quality of life, the way that you would see it is within those top five things, let's say they can't do most of them. If they can't do most of them, that's not good. Normally I tell people that if they can't do three out of five of those things, it might be time to consider euthanasia because they are not going to be as happy as they would be. Obviously we consider pain um, and even if they can do like all top five of those things but they're in a lot of pain and your vet tells you that they're in a lot of pain, and there's nothing you can really do to fix it, then it would be time to consider that as well. So that's the way I talk about it is the top five things and you know the top five things that they love and if they can't do three or more of them it might be time to consider humane euthanasia because they are not going to be a very happy dog continuing their life. The other way that I have considered this topic and uh, brought it up to people in terms of like how to consider the right time for euthanasia is the journey's quality of life scale and I've got the pamphlet here so I'm gonna read it to you directly from here so that I'm not you know giving you incorrect information so it was developed by Dr. Katie Hilst and it is a quality of life scale that actually is used at one of the humane euthanasia like home euthanasia facilities that um, I personally really like. This isn't necessarily advertisement for them or anything. I don't necessarily, you know, I don't know them or anything. I've never used them or whatever, but this quality of life scale was given to us at work and I actually really like it. Here's kind of the beginning message from Katie Hilst. I developed this quality of life scale after hundreds of conversations over the years with pet owners and their families making the decision to euthanize their pet. Sometimes after the discussion, people realize that their pet is enjoying life and they still have time left with their pet. 
Other times, people realize their pet is suffering more than they were aware, so they choose the final act of caring. In either case, the journey scale is meant to get you thinking and considering the factors that affect your pet's happiness and sense of well-being. There are no hard and fast rules, although in general, a higher score is better. A score of 80 is a happy, healthy pet. A score of 8 is a pet that is suffering. A low score on any of the measures may be a reason to consider euthanasia. Please use this as a starting place to explore your pet's quality of life and address your concerns with your veterinarian. So, I hope that that sort of um, explains what this is. Basically, um, it is a couple different topics. Uh, so it starts with J, jumping or mobility, O, ouch or pain, U, uncertainty and understanding, R, respiration or breathing, N, neatness or hygiene, E, eating and drinking, Y, U, so U as the pet owner, and S, social ability. So starting with J, jumping or mobility, one point might be your pet cannot walk or stand without assistance. So let's say that um, I've had a couple dogs come in and they have harnesses where basically you have to hold a handle on the front and hold a handle on the back to help them walk, um, which is a really not great level for that. I would say that those are at one point. Five points is your pet can move around as long as he or she has their pain medication. They can do about half the activities they did when they were healthier, or they can get about half the distance on a walk, or spend half the time doing their activities like chasing a frisbee, swimming, hunting, agility, as they used to. And then 10 points, which would be all the points for that category, is your pet is fully active and enjoying all of their activities to their liking. And then the O, ouch or pain. One point might be your pet seems painful, whining, crying, not willing to move even while taking pain medication. Um, and, and just like a note, a lot of pets are gonna actually hide that pain or weakness. It is a natural instinct for them to do that. So just keep that in mind. Five points is your pet is on pain medications and they're helping at least 75% of the time. So you'd notice a decrease in pain in your animal at least 75% of the time. 10 points would be if your pet is pain free. The U for uncertainty and understanding, one point, your pet has a diagnosis, medical condition, that cannot be predicted. You may not understand the diagnosis or the problem may be prone to sudden catastrophic events. So like if your dog has seizures that can lead to them uh, throwing up and like choking on the vomit or um, the seizures can lead to them being aggressive, that's kind of a catastrophic event. Five points would be your pet has a medical condition that can change over time, but is currently stable and you're able to monitor it with the help of your veterinarian and make adjustments to treatment when necessary. You understand what to watch for, the treatment plan, and when your pet needs medical attention. So like, maybe your pet has diabetes and you have to do injections, but that's kind of it. 10 points, your pet is happy and healthy. There are no medical issues beyond routine preventative care. So the R for respiration or breathing, one point is your pet has severe episodes of difficulty breathing, coughing, or open mouth breathing, so the panting, but like excessive panting. So not just when it's hot, but when there's, you know, nothing going on and they're still doing that. They are not eating or drinking in an effort to breathe. At this point, you should seek immediate medical attention. So like, let's say they, they're, you know, they haven't eaten for several days, but they're panting so hard that they can't go eat because they have to use their mouth and their throat and everything to breathe. Five points would be your pet has occasional bouts of coughing, wheezing, or exercise intolerance. They're short, less than two minutes, and they're on medication from your veterinarian that can be adjusted to help. 10 points would be your pet has no coughing, wheezing, or exercise intolerance. N uh, is for neatness or hygiene. One point would be your pet spends time laying in their urine and or feces. They may be unable to control their elimination or unable to move after elimination. Your pet may have an external tumor or mass that is bleeding, foul smelling, infected, and you are unable to keep it clean or bandaged because of where it is on the body. Your pet may have pressure sores like bed sores from lying down and being unable to move. Um, 
Five points would be your pet may need assistance to urinate or defecate, but they do not spend time lying in their waste. They are able to hold their urine or feces until they get assistance. They may have an external tumor or mass, but it can be kept clean and or bandaged and is not infected. They groom themselves, but may need assistance in some areas like their rear end or something like that. 10 points, your pet can urinate, defecate, and groom themselves without assistance. They have no medical issues that, causing, that are causing them to have a bad odor. You can provide any care issues to address their hygiene, baths, trips to the groomer, anal gland expression, teen cleaning, etc. E is for eating and drinking. Number one, your pet is refusing food and water. They may be vomiting, having diarrhea, or they may be nauseous. Cats may hang out at the water bowl with their heads hanging over it. So they they will hang over the water bowl, but they won't necessarily drink. I haven't seen this behavior, um, but I'm, I'm sure that it happens. Five points is your pet is eating a lot more slowly and is not interested in, in food as they used to be. They may go back several times before they finish a meal, so like grazing. They're eating slightly less than usual, but are eating their regular food. Number 10, your pet is eating and drinking normally. The why is you. So you are one point, and this is, this is more um, about how you feel than how your pet feels, and I know that might seem selfish, but all the other letters on here are about the animal. This one is literally just about you um, because, you know, it's your animal and this is your decision. One point is you're constantly worried about your pet. You may not understand what is happening to them. You feel overwhelmed and stressed trying to provide for their needs. You may feel unable to provide for their needs physically, emotionally, or financially. So there's some cancers where the treatment is $15,000. And I think that for a lot of families that is not possible. You may be worried about how they will fare when you are away on an upcoming trip. There may be tension in the family and disagreement on how to proceed with the animal's care. Five points, you understand your pet's condition and are able with some effort to meet their needs. You may have concerns, but they're manageable. 10 points, you are easily able to meet your pet's needs and are not worried about their care. And then the S, the last letter is social ability. One point is your pet does not spend time with the family. So we're talking about animals and people. Your animal needs to be social with animals and people in order to have a good social life. Your pet does not spend time with the family. They may hide, become irritable or snippy if bothered. Um, some pets that do not enjoy being petted may not seem to care if they are petted. Perhaps your pet is unable to physically get to the room where they usually spend time with others. Five points is your pet spends at least half the time with the family. They're not irritable or snippy. They happily greet you when you come home. 10 points is your pet enjoys you, the family, and others, including other animals they may know, greets you at the door when you arrive home, and seeks out company. So, obviously, all of these things need to be, you know, considered um, when it comes to your pet's personality. Let's say that you free feed or something. Obviously, the eating thing is going to be different. Not that I support free feeding, but... Um, and let's say you, your dog is dog aggressive, okay? If they are normally dog aggressive and they've been dog aggressive since they were young and you haven't been able to fix it and that's their normal behavior, obviously that isn't related to illness. Uh, it's just like a behavioral problem. Obviously, you want as high of points as possible. So eight is the lowest you can get. Eight points is the lowest you can get because that would be a one in all categories. And 80 is the highest you can get because that would be 10 in all categories. So I encourage you to consider where your animal is on that scale if you are considering uh, euthanasia for your animal. I also consider you to seek out second opinions. Uh, if your animal has a medical condition, different veterinarians might be able to provide different treatment and care. They might have different opinions, that kind of stuff. So I hope that this has been a little helpful to you in sort of thinking about that. I know that it's a really tough subject. Uh, and this video isn't necessarily for my normal audience, I guess, because uh, I know that a lot of my normal audience is service dog handlers. 
who have, you know, middle age or young working dogs, but in terms of people who might just find my channel, I do want to offer this. Obviously, I'm not going to get monetized, <laughs> but I do want to offer this as sort of some advice to you so that when you're thinking about this, you have like maybe a numerical scale to look at because I know that when I'm looking at it in terms of dogs that are in my care, obviously the parents make the decision. And so this is the, this is, you know, one of the tools that I give them so that they can feel like they're making the best decision. So again, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to leave any comments, any suggestions for what I can tell people or for what I can, what advice I can offer, uh, experiences of your own, um, if you need some support, uh, if your animal was recently euthanized and you need some support from the community, go ahead and leave it down below. My community is very supportive. Um, we'll be there for you. So, um, and if you have other comments that you would rather not share privately, I always have my email in the description of the video. So you can go down there and send me an email and I will respond. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Um, and I will see you guys uh, in probably some happier content relatively soon. Bye.